Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North and South America and all the ships and clippers at sea. Let's go to press. Flash, London. The terms of surrender for the Italian army in Ethiopia have just been handed to Mussolini's representatives. This will give England about 38,000 prisoners, bringing the number of Italians captured in Ethiopia to 200,000. London. Reports persisted in England today that the wife of Rudolf Hess has been arrested by the Nazi police. Akron, Ohio. A big strike in the Goodrich rubber plant here was called off today when CIO workers agreed on a six cent raise in pay per hour. The government today is trying to settle 18 defense strikes. Boston, Massachusetts. The condition of Franklin Delano Roosevelt Jr., who was hurt today in a motor car crash near Walpole, Massachusetts, is not serious. The president's boy, an ensign in the Naval Reserve, turned over when a tire blew Philadelphia. The G-men are investigating the $1 million shipyard fire today, which caused the death of Michael Regan, the watchman. Regan was found under piles of wreckage at the yard, which deals mainly in defense work. Police believe Regan was murdered by saboteurs. New York. It's a baby boy for the fortune Peter Ryan's at the doctor's hospital in New York City. She is the former Anne Royal of New York and Mount Kisco and the New York Social Register. It is also a baby girl for the George Henrys at the same hospital, the doctors. Washington. The federal agents and the police arrested aliens all over the nation during the weekend. The coast-to-coast -coast total was 169 arrests. 92 of the aliens were arrested in New York City, 28 in Florida, and 15 in San Francisco. New York. The most thrilling spectacle in the history of New York was Mayor LaGuardia's I Am an American Day rally in Central Park today. The mayor said it was the biggest crowd in the history of the nation to attend a patriotic rally. Over 675,000 people. In Chicago, William Newton spoke before 125,000 Americans. Flash. Little River, South Carolina. An excursion boat by name the Nightingale. The Nightingale. An excursion boat reported carrying employees of the Rocky Mount plant of the Orange Crush Bottling Company exploded in the Atlantic Ocean. It happened seven miles offshore. Seven persons are reported killed, and several others may have drowned. Coast Guard boats are on the scene. The name of the boat, an excursion boat, is the Nightingale. The passengers, employees, of the Rocky Mount plant of the Orange Crush Bottling Company. It happened in the Atlantic Ocean. Behind the international scene, Washington. These are believed to be the Nazi battle plans for the Near East and Africa. Syria is the base for three pincer movements. To the north against Turkey, to the southeast against Iraq, and to the south against Palestine and Suez. The first drive will be southeast on Iraq, where the heavily outnumbered British face precisely the same situation as Greece and Dunkirk, except that the British Navy faces the trip around Arabia 2,500 miles. Russia is expected to push south from the Caspian area to the Persian Gulf at the very same time. From the left flank will come heavy reinforcements of Nazis through French North Africa for the drive on Egypt. With Suez mopped up, all Nazi forces will unite and the drive west on the Atlantic will start against Gibraltar and Dakar, only 1,600 miles from South America. London. For practical purposes, the Hess flight is of no importance. Its cause is his aversion to Russia. Hess is said to have made this comment. Comrade in Russian means kamerad, which is surrender, in German. Lisbon. Turkey is lost to England as an ally. Eden's belief that Turkey will resist is discounted in most diplomatic circles, and that Turkey's resistance would be futile is accepted by all the experts. Vichy. United Press yesterday revealed this attitude by the Vichy government. It was explained that France was grateful for American food, but that this American aid, said France, was very little and unimportant. In fact, the word used was infinitesimal. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the absolute lowdown. How only a few shiploads of food to France helped the war effort of the Germans. Ten shiploads a week, amounting to 50,000 tons sent to France, would replace in calorie values 187,500 tons of potatoes. 
Attention, Mr. and Mrs. United States. At any given time, there can be only one President of the United States. Constitutionally, he is charged with the responsibility of our foreign affairs, which means that morally, his policies are entitled to your support. Last fall, the American people knew that democratic institutions were under worldwide attack, and the captain they picked for our ship of state was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The dictators were fooled. They had predicted disaster. But the American way was strong enough to hold an election in the middle of a crisis. The dictators seek to prolong that crisis to divide us. To the intense disappointment of Joe Goebbels of Berlin, Wendell Wilkie stands by the American way. The candidate Mr. Wilkie opposed as Franklin D. Roosevelt, he loyally supports as President of the United States. At the election, Wendell Wilkie had won the votes of many. Since the election, he has won the respect of all Americans by forfeiting a Nazi medal forever. Mr. Wilkie set an example of working democracy. He has shown the dictators that the leader of a large minority will wholeheartedly support a leader elected by a small majority. But more important, Wendell Wilkie has shown the principal resource of democracy. In the showdown, ladies and gentlemen, Roosevelt can depend upon a Wilkie while Hitler has only a Hess. The Walter Winchell Warmonger Department, for the edification of Mr. and Mrs. Rip Van Winkle, from border to border and coast to coast. Los Angeles, attention Toledo, Ohio. A few weeks ago, I reported that one Kenneth Eggert of Toledo was allegedly one of the agitators of a strike against a defense plant on the West Coast, and that this very same Eggert was a communist troublemaker. Eggert demanded a copy of Winchell's remarks and threatened to sue me for my so-called malicious lie about him, etc., etc. The Dyes Congressional Committee sends me the following information. That Kenneth Eggert, alias Eggert, or Eckert, was issued a passport to go to Russia on November the 3rd, 1932, and that the files of the State Department also reveal that the passage to Russia of this communist-inspired strike agitator was paid for by the Communist Party. Washington, D.C. On Wednesday next week, the Dyes Committee will start hearings on communistic activities in Washington, D.C. Mr. Dyes says he will thoroughly discredit the American Peace Mobilization Outfit, which has been picketing the White House. Mr. Dyes says he will expose that group as being a communist party line, not a picket line. Washington. Last Sunday night, ladies and gentlemen, I reported exclusively that government agents would arrest a certain rabble-rouser who had allegedly sent threatening letters to prominent Americans. His initials, for the time being, are D. S. A, B, C, D. S. He really does the dirty laundry for many big-name Nazi lovers in the United States. He and his file, containing many letters from his supporters and backers, have been seized. Congratulations, Mr. Government Man. Jersey City, New Jersey. A few months ago, I reported the peculiar activities of a major in the United States Army Intelligence Service. His name is Major John E. Kelly of 14 Brinker Hop Street, Jersey City. I said at the time that he was associating with some very strange people for a member of Army Intelligence. New York, by NBC shortwave listening post. London Radio Tonight reported that the Spanish cabinet will meet tomorrow and be reorganized in a way to give Serrano Suna, the foreign minister of Spain, wider powers. To give to Hitler, of course. London. 
Scandinavian reports reaching London said that thousands of newspapers were given away today in Norway on the occasion of National Day. The Nazis there tried to suppress those newspapers, which printed a message from King Hakon. Hundreds of loyal Norwegians have been arrested by the Nazi Gestapo. Attention, men. The Navy confirmed last Sunday night's story about accepting men between the ages of 17 up to 50. 50. The Navy especially wants machinists, carpenters, radio operators, radio technicians, and yeomen. Those enlisting in the Naval Reserve will be released from duty when the emergency is over. And that, ladies and gentlemen, winds up another edition of the Jurgens Journal until next Sunday night at the very same time. Until then, and with lotions of love, I remain your New York correspondent, Walter Winchell, who reminds you of the great difference in two systems of government. Rudolf Hess preferred to bail out over Britain than be out on bail in Berlin. Good night. Check out my other videos and subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video.